Right now, we are so over capacity that we can only respond to the absolute most urgent of rescue calls. I want to report a abandonment of dogs in the bad situation. When I get a message like the one I received this morning, my lack of space just kind of goes out the window. Um, my aunt passed away and she was in the house. Her body had been laying there for six days just down her body. It's a terrible situation. A lady had called us and said that a family member had died inside the house and that the dogs had been left for quite a while to fend for themselves. The house is located in Oakdale, Louisiana, which is about three hours from New Orleans. Um, just call around and ask for help because we're desperate at this point. This house is in a very rural part of Louisiana. There is no animal control, there is no animal shelters. So without our help, there's a good chance that these dogs may not make it. Where's Matt at? So let's put uh, this that one, one Yeah, that one's gonna have to come here. There you go. So we're loading up several crates, taking two vehicles, so that we can just prepare ourselves for what might be there. So we're kind of going in here a little blind. We're not sure how many dogs there are. It's kind of a little serious, you know, because the woman passed away in her house. She was there for a few days, from what I understand, before she was found. So I'd assume that it's going to be pretty nasty. Basically, I've never been faced with a situation like this before, so I really am not sure what to expect. Jesus. This is way back here. When I get a call like this, you start to paint a pretty rough, scary picture in your head. And when we pulled up in the driveway, it is exactly what I thought. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is gonna be really sad. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Tia. My name's Natasha Amami. I'm very much appreciative that Tia came out here to help. So, we don't know how many dogs is here. Okay. Sorry, guys. My aunt was living in this house and she just became really, really depressed and just let the house go, she let herself go, and it just became a really bad situation. So your aunt lived here with her dogs by herself? Yeah, she basically would pick up strays because okay. there's not an animal control out here. And so she, she's always done that. We were pretty desperate, and I was reaching out to a lot of the shelters, and the shelters would tell us no, they couldn't drive out here, they didn't have enough funds, and I was just in shock. When she passed away, she was in the house, her body was on the ground like for six days, and the dogs were in there. With her? Yes. Finally, a cousin came by because she wasn't responding to text messages, mm -hmm. and then looked in the window and saw her body like passed out, and then called the police. And so the day of her services, we were like, let's go check on the house. So we drove up, and we heard the barking. And we're like, oh my god. They were just out here without food or water. And so we bought mm -hmm. food, brought it over here, and we're like, what were we going to do? And that's whenever I started calling around. Despite whatever issues this woman had, she was the lifeline, you know, the caretaker for these dogs. And when she passed away, they had nobody. Okay, so I see there's a white one here, mm -hmm. and then a little chihuahua. Nobody really knows how many dogs we're looking for at this point. So what we're gonna do is just catch the ones that we do see and get them loaded up in the vans. Come here. Come here. Come here. We're gonna take your friend with you. Hey, come on. These dogs, I mean, they're, they're, they're confused. You know, they're probably so confused, um, not understanding what happened. You're okay, you're okay. Don't be scared, oh my God, look at your little feet, you're so scared. First they were by themselves for six days while her aunt lay dead in the house. There you go. With nobody, you know, it's just like, wow. Good job, buddy. Good job, oh yes. You know, hopefully we can give them some comfort now. So we're gonna go in the house now? Yeah. Okay. At that point, we decided to go into the house to see if any more were trapped inside. You have access to the house or no? No, we're at, the windows should be open. Hearing the story of this woman's passing and just looking around, going into this house is not something I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. Okay, because what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do a quick sweep of the inside before it gets dark. It's I know, we gotta go in there and look for the dogs. Yeah. But we're not gonna leave until we make sure that we have done everything possible to find every single dog. Let's come it's, open the door. It's gonna be bad now. Yeah, this door's locked. <clears throat> oh. What is it? Okay. OK. 
Okay. The fleas are horrible. Oh my god. It's fleas? They're horrible. Okay, well. I'm gonna go put my jeans okay. on real quick. Oh my god. Oh my god. It wasn't so much that it smelled. It was the feeling. The feeling of death. Pup pups. Oh. Oh my god. You know what this is? Oh. They were eating the foam. They were eating the foam to stay alive and they puked it all up. That's what this is. That's what this is. Just such a sad, sad feeling here. I don't see any animals in here. No. I don't. Let's walk around a little bit, just out here on the property. There weren't any dogs inside the house, so at this point, we just have to assume that they got out through a hole or through a window. Did you see anything? No, not under the porch. I don't see anything under the house either, Mom. No, me either. I just want to make absolutely sure that when we leave, we have all the dogs with us. Pup pups! I don't see nothing. We searched as much as we could. This is a very rural area. There are woods for miles behind this house. I wouldn't chase after him. Let me call him over here. He's coming over right now. There, I see something right there. There he is right yep. there. Let me call him over here. He's coming over right now. Hi, come here. Oh, little border collie. Oh, little border collie. Aww. Hi, we were worried about you. After everything we've seen in and out of this house, it was such a great feeling to see this little border collie just come running up to us out of the woods. Whoa, come here. She's going to meet everybody. I think she just wanted to make sure that she didn't get left behind. Come on, come on. You're OK. Look, look at that, a blanket. OK, good job. But now she's safe, and we're going to take care of her and her friends. Well, thank you. We okay. really appreciate yeah. this. Thank you. No, thank you guys for, you know what, just keeping up with it and calling on us. It's a very heartbreaking situation for this family. They're dealing with a dead family member and at the same time trying to keep it together so that they can help get these dogs saved. And I just really felt bad for them. So well, we'll talk to you very soon then, okay? Okay. okay thank, thank you, you guys. Bye-bye. Yeah, nice thank you very you. much. Now that the dogs are safe with us, we just got to get them back to Villa Lobos and on the road to recovery, both physically and emotionally. It's been a very long and emotional day. I've personally never been on a rescue situation like that. Let's take the big ones out first. OK. You're OK. I'm just thankful that we were able to get the dogs and, and get them safe. Come on, you're your friend. No person or dog should ever have to live like that. Come on, no. <laughs> I'll be your friend. They look a lot more alive now. Yeah. After what these dogs have been through, I think that they can actually sense that they're now in a safer place. And I'm just glad that we were able to give them some new hope. All right, Chawinis. And hopefully one day we'll be able to get them into a new home of their own. It's okay, don't be scared. It's okay. So this is the two dogs that we got out of the house in Oakdale where the woman passed away in the house. Oh, my God. Oh, man, that's a sad story right there. It's been a few days since me and Mom went and rescued these four dogs out in Oakdale. Oh, my God, look at your little feet. You're so scared. One at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Come on. So we brought them to the vet, and besides the flea infestation on them, you know, they're in pretty good shape. The fleas were just so bad, man. They were pretty bad with the fleas, I'd have to say. It, it's one of the worst cases I've ever seen. So we brought them back, and we gave them a pill. And the following day, we bathed them with medication. How you doing? They're good dogs, man. They're real friendly, huh? They're real friendly. They show a lot of love. They're not scared. They're not skittish. You go in their kennels, they come up to you. They lick you on the face. You know, they're always happy. Hey, little mama. Hey. 
All right. With these dogs being in the open field, being able to run loose all day, every day, you know, coming here, you know, it could be really hard to adjust to that. But they're doing pretty good. They're taking it well. It's got like water repellent fur. <laughs> it's just rolling right <laughs> off, huh? I feel so much better after this, I promise. Hey, yeah, you know what I mean? The dogs were in some pretty rough living conditions, and for them to still be as loving and as caring as they are is amazing. Oh, I like a towel. We're gonna do whatever we have to do to make sure that these dogs stay healthy. Oh, you wanted to give me a kiss? Thank you. Yeah. We're always trying to get these dogs a fair of a home, and hopefully we can find these guys one. Come on. Y'all cleaned up now.